Hi, and welcome back for the eighth week of the DRK March to May Knit Along q and I can't believe it's already two months in. So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, I am wearing my stripes sweater today. As always, I'll link to it below and I know I'm gonna get questions. So my hat is actually from Buffalo Wool Company. I got it at Rhinebeck in 2018 maybe, um, but they're an awesome company. You can find them online. I will try to remember to also add that to the link below. I don't know it typed up yet, but I'll try to remember. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the questions. Number one, I'm currently knitting the junction sweater with spin cycle as my contrasting color. Do you have any suggestions for managing color shifting yarns when knitting a project such as the junction or spark sweaters? Do you split the skein so the sleeves match, blend with each other, and the body of the sweater? Any suggestions? So, yeah, I, it's a, I've actually talked about this a lot because I think that people kind of fall into two camps. You're either the, like, let it ride, see what unfolds as you knit through this color-changing yarn, which can be a lot of the excitement and fun of using that yarn. For me, it's what pushes me forward in my project because I'm so excited to see what color is going to come next and how they're all going to play together when I'm using it in color work. But I do have friends who will actually cut their skein and jump to a different color. I do not do that um, because I think the fun of the yarn is that you kind of have to give in to what it is a little bit. It helps with my personality, which can be a little on the controlling side, it kind of helps let me just let loose, let my hair down and let the yarn take me on an adventure. Um, and I say even for sleeves, I really don't worry about if they match up. I should say though, that I am not a matching person. <laughs> I, If I match too much, I'll actually change to kind of undo some of that matching. I've been that way since I was a kid, much to my mother's like not understanding of it. I just have never been one to do a lot of matching. So I don't mind if my sleeves don't match. I have definitely seen other people. Um, Yvonne, one of my testers for the Spark Cardi, she actually really played around with her skeins to get her sleeves to match. So when it's a bigger project like a sweater, you could definitely try that. Um, I think a great way to see what's in that skein, if you're feeling like that's important to you. Um, I just happen to have a skein right here. I actually recommend then opening your skeins up and I do this with fading. So when I'm fading and using colorful yarns that have a lot of different colors in a skein, you can't really tell what's truly going on in there unless you open it up. Cause you can see like here I have a lot of orange, here I have a lot of blue. So what I like to do is I like to open my skeins and lay them side by side so I can kind of see, okay, these ones maybe look similar. Use those for your sleeves. Um, but again, and you can always, I will, the most I do in, as far as trying to control it would be starting either from the inside or the outside of my yarn cake. So I always wind a center pole ball and that way I have options because there are times where I'm like, oh, I really wanna see how like this side of this skein plays with what I'm using over here. So that would give you a choice from starting from either end, but otherwise I really just kinda, kinda let it go. I actually grabbed my night shift. So there was definitely, as I was knitting this, there's like, parts of it that I was like, oh, how do I feel about this? Um, but as it grew, I, find, I found that it really worked together. And but I definitely always have like my favorite parts. So my favorite part is right here. It's the turquoisey orange part is my absolute favorite part of the shawl. I also really love this section. Um, so it was really fun to just see. I couldn't really predict that. I just played with it and yeah, I, I think that's fun. On my shifty, my sleeves are too, quite different, but I kind of love them and I do have a favorite one again. Um, there's one that has this amazing like green color in it. I wish I had that up here right now, but I don't. Um, so yeah. All right, question number two, I would like to know which bind off you use with the German twisted and tubular cast ons. I love learning the cast ons, but I really want the bind off to look alike 
or very similar to the cast on. All right, I'm gonna have you all bear with me for one second, because I don't wanna forget this to give you a link. Um, so for the Twisted German cast on, I've actually thought a lot about this because I use that cast on so much and I also wanted something that was similar. When I played around with it, I found that actually our classic bind off, knit two stitches, pull one over the other, is the closest to me visually to that cast on. I have played around with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Um, but that's a very distinct looking bind off. On one side, it looks quite similar to an I-cord bind off. On the other side, it actually reminds me of a bicycle chain. You can see these like pearl bumps that look wrapped. Um, the nice thing is that it's very stretchy. So I do, if I really need the stretch, like maybe I'm doing brioche, I do like to use that bind off um, to match the stretchiness of a Twisted German cast on. But Otherwise, my actual favorite thing to do is I go up quite a few needle sizes and I do a traditional bind off. When you see a pattern that says bind off loosely, most of us aren't going to be able to continue a loose tension evenly. We're going to end up having some tighter, some looser, and it can end up looking kind of sloppy. So my preference is to, let's say I'm using a size US 3 needle. I might even go all the way up to like a seven to do just my bind off. And what I find is that lets me tug to keep a really nice, even tension throughout, but my bind off won't be too tight. And so then that classic bind off can work quite well. So that is the one I think looks most similar twist to the twisted um, German cast on. And for the tubular, there is a tubular bind off. So I will also include that in the links below. And as I said in the video where I talked about that, um, that tubular cast ons and bind offs are really my favorite. I am actually playing with it right now for a two by two rib. I usually have always used it for a one by one rib, but I'm playing with it for two by two and it's turning out really nice. So I'm excited to share that all with you in a pattern coming this summer. Alrighty, number three. Oh, I was so excited when I saw this one. So I'm yet to find a perfect way to join a new ball of yarn. Would you kindly share your method? Many thanks in advance and happy knitting. I'm gonna apologize right now. I live in a very old 120 year old house. As you can see behind me, we've got radiator heating and even through my noise canceling headphones, I can hear that one's going off and it's kind of an intense sound. I apologize if you can hear it as well. Um, all right, so for the yarn, my favorite way to add yarn, if you are using a wool or any other animal fiber that's feltable, I will um, spit splice. And so basically what that means is you take your ends of yarn. I, I was looking to see if I have a ball of yarn right here, but oh wait, I do right here. It's actually a little ball of my hand spun. Okay, so with these, what I like to do is untwist the end a little to separate, like loosen up the plies. You can see how they're starting to come apart. And so I take a ply and remove one ply. You're trying to like make it half as thick as it used to be. And I'll kind of rough up the end a little bit. So just kind of pulling that fiber. I always forget where the camera is. Um, pulling that fiber out and about a little bit. Boop, boop. And then I would do it with the other end too. Trying to see if I can find it in here and then I can actually show you. Yep. So then here's my other end. I would do it with that one too. go and again kind of roughing it up so then what you're going to do is you need to moisten those two ends so i will typically <laughs> spit that's why it's called a spit splice but i will try not to do that here i've got a bottle of water um 
during these times, it's probably best that we don't spit on our hands. So you wanna get your hands damp. So basically all you're doing is your hand felting your two ends together. So again, I've got my ends lined up and now I'm just gonna rub them. The reason I do like to use spit is because when you just pour water out of a bottle, a lot of times your hands are too wet. So it's kind of a, a balance of having them just wet enough but you create that friction, check it, see if it's kind of rubbing together, and then boop, 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 there you go. You've joined your yarn. No ends to weave in. So that's my favorite, favorite, favorite method. And I share that in a lot of my classes. I still remember when I learned how to do that. And so whenever I find somebody who hasn't learned that trick yet, I'm like, oh, it's gonna change your knitting life. Uh, because then you don't have to weave in all those ends. If it is a superwash yarn, a plant fiber yarn, um, acrylic, anything like that, it won't work. It does have to be able to be felted. In that case, what I like to generally do is I put in my new yarn when I still have a long enough tail of my old yarn to knit a few more stitches. And then what I do is I actually, so I knit a stitch with the new yarn and then I knit a stitch with the yarn that's running out. And I do that every other stitch, almost like knitting color work. And it secures it. And I do that, you know, for about six in six stitches, not six inches. Um, and that way I just feel like it's a little more secure and it's not all funky every time I work past it for the next one or two rows. And then I can simply weave in my ends um, when I'm all done with the project. All right. What knitting fiber magazines do you suggest to read? So there's a bunch out there, um, but I looked at my bookshelves. I have a lot of knitting books and magazines. I love to collect them and look through them. Um, so my favorites that I found that I'm like, oh wow, these are definitely the ones that I tend to pick up whenever I'm at a yarn shop are Amarisu. Um, Pom Pom, they also do great books and magazines. They publish both, um, Lina, and then for, oh, and making, making scenes great if you are both into sewing and knitting because they do both. Um, and then for spinning, I love Ply Magazine. The information in that one, if you're a spinner, is amazing it's such a wealth of knowledge and they tend to focus on one topic per issue and so you can even still go back and order older issues and i've found them to be super valuable resource um but yeah those ones are my top all right you have commented before about measuring a sweater you love and selecting the right size based on ease i'm wondering though some designers want you to measure your bust if that's the case is it with a bra on or actual bust size I do recommend measuring your bust with the bra you would wear with that sweater because that, depending on the bra style you like to wear, can obviously alter that measurement. So you want that sweater to look good on what you would wear over it. A lot of times if I'm um, taking my bust measurement or the measurement of someone else, I'll even have them or myself do it over a tank top or a t-shirt that I often wear under the my sweaters um, because again if that's what you're usually going to be wearing then you know that that is going to be a pretty accurate representation for you all right that was it thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me thanks for all the comments and questions you've all been leaving um yeah join the knit along i did see i had one other question on how to join the knit along you don't have to sign up, anything like that. You can just head right to the links below. Again, all this information I'm talking about right below this video, you'll see where it has my name and I've started typing. There's a little, it, it's little, but it says show more. If you click that, it'll open up and you'll see all the links to everything that I've talked about, including to both of the Knit Along forums. And all you do is tap those. All the information is listed at the top of the page, so you can scroll up to make sure you see the top. 
that tells you all the information, how long the knit along is going, all of that good stuff. And to participate, all you have to do is hit reply to the thread, jump in, start chatting, make friends, share pictures. We'd love to have you. Um, it's still going on till May 19th. And then I have some big news coming up soon for the next two knit alongs, which will be kicking off starting in May, right after this one ends. Um, so yeah, make sure to check that out. Sign up for the newsletter if you want to know all of those good details. And that's where I put surprise flash sales, all my introductory sales, tips, tricks, tutorials, all that good stuff. So I hope y'all have a great weekend and I'll see you back here next week. Bye.